guys, how you doing, man? Good to see y'all. Actually, I can't see any of you, but that's fine. I can see the white people up front. I can see you. Uh, brave and strong, as you always are. Uh, always reminding me of your presence. Very good. Uh, So she can have grandchildren uh, because she's fucking selfish. Uh, <laughs> selfish person. Uh, she saw me living life, having fun, saving money, coming without repercussions. She was like, no, 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 none of this, no, okay? If you're not going to be a doctor or a lawyer as a Nigerian, you need to make me a soccer team immediately, okay? <laughs> Do it. You need to make me a soccer team. She tried to sell me on it. She was like, hey, honey, listen, I gotta tell you something, okay? Having a child is amazing. I'm not gonna lie that nine months of pregnancy was really tough. You've ruined my body forever. The moment you were born, I never stopped worrying, but I can safely say that having you here now is the greatest achievement of my entire life. And I was like, Mama, first of all, that is an awful sales pitch. That's terrible. That is a terrible sales pitch. Um, I thought you wanted me to make babies, not go get an emergency vasectomy. I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> Second of all, how am I the greatest achievement of her entire life, okay? This woman bought her Mercedes Benz, okay? SUV, thank you. Okay, a lot of money. I think that's shooting a little low for her. My mom raised me alone, has a PhD, runs her own healthcare company, and one time in the 80s, with, during a domestic dispute that my father started, she whooped his ass with nothing but a Hot Wheel track. <laughs> yeah. My father was six feet, one inches tall, 200 pounds of muscle, and fought in the Nigerian Civil War. She whooped his ass, broke his nose, he got really scared, called the cops, and they took him to prison. Okay. <laughs> Quite frankly, that is far more impressive than a 33-year-old son who does comedy and thinks that Nickelback is underrated. Do you understand that? <laughs> okay. I was 18 years old, 1999, that was a uh, pre-9-11 America, and I had a flat top haircut, peach fuzz, and your boy's wearing double XL flannel shirts. Not hot. It wasn't, it wasn't hitting. It wasn't hitting. <laughs> wasn't it? And uh, I didn't know much about anything, but I knew that I have no business being around women. I knew. I knew that. I knew. I knew that. And I was like, I'm not prepared for women at all. I don't know them, so I'm going to stay away from them. I don't know anything about them. It's too much for me. I'm going to be nice to them. I'm going to make them laugh. I'm going to be cordial. I'm going to make everyone laugh. I'm going to be good at sports. I'm going to be a tremendous dancer. I was a fantastic dancer. I'm going to do all the things, but I'm not going to engage with women on a romantic level because I've got no fucking business there. And then my friends thought it would be cute one time to send me to a Catholic high school football game. Uh, and I had never, I, that's where I first learned the mythos of the Catholic school girl. I didn't know then. I didn't know about these unicorn white women that just <laughs> running about. I didn't know. I didn't know about the majesty that these white men tell you about. They, they, they create whole porn categories for, for this type of thing, you know. And I didn't know, uh, but I, I encountered a girl, uh, my friends introduced me to this nice woman, and her name was Elizabeth Schlosky. And Elizabeth was very nice, very affable, very personable, all of a sudden very pretty, and we hit it off really well. Unbeknownst to me, Elizabeth was uh, into black guys, because it was 1999, and that statement was not problematic. It was very good. <laughs> that shit was progressive. You being a niggas in 99, that was very good. That's very, that's very good. Like, she and the niggas, yeah, she and the niggas. Like, like, uh, even other black dudes perked up, like, yeah, she's in the black guys. Like, say word? We were in Columbus, Ohio. There's nothing but white people. What do you want us to do? Are you kidding? We got three Mexicans in all of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, three! Three of them! And all of them, old. Can't do nothing with that. We set up a date. We set up to have a date. We had a nice time. The date was going to be scheduled for next week. My friend Charles, who was 16 at the time, he could drive. So we had the date. We exchanged uh, AIM instant messenger uh, profiles. Uh, R.I.P. You know what I'm saying? Like, R.I.P. to gods. Pay respect to your children, to your fathers. Your fathers and your mothers. So we talked all week. We finally hang out. I don't even remember what happened. I tried I tried to research as much as I could. I tried to research as much 80s porn as I can. I didn't know what to do. Uh, the night's over. Charles is taking the long way back to her house. And she sits directly on my lap in the backseat of Charles's car. And your boy is arisen. Okay, like, your boy, your boy is uh, uncomfortably hard. Uh, 
trying, you know what I'm saying? And then, and she's like fucking rubbing on my, she's like putting her hands fucking here and do, and she's like breathing real hard into my ear, and I'm just, this is sensory overload, are you kidding me, dog? Like, this is better than the first Star Wars, are you serious? The graphics are way cool. The right, and she like, and I, I'm not doing anything, she takes my right hand, and she starts to like, put it down, like, her shirt into where her pants are, and your boy, like, I'm fighting, I'm fighting with force, I'm fighting force, I'm like, hard, and I don't know what to do because I don't want to fuck up. I didn't know you could put fingers in vaginas. I didn't know you could do this. I'm, I am, I, I am Nigerian. I'm not a Western devil. Like, you know, 